What's up everyone, this is Cybernine, and today we have a Metaphys Archetype Discussion video for you guys. So yeah, it's been a while since I've done with these Archetype Discussion videos, so basically what I'm trying to do in this video is I will talk about a specific archetype, whether it is a new one, maybe it gained uh, new support even, and, and things like that really. And in these videos, I try to summarize how the archetype works, and uh, hopefully give people an understanding on how to build them, different cards that work with them, and different things like that too. For an example, you know, since this one is about Metaphys, I'm hoping this video will be useful to people that maybe they are interested in building them or you know just interested in what they do maybe you haven't really heard about them and you want to know what they do and this video will be like a good summary on how they work and that's what I'm trying to do in this video so let me know in the comments if you guys like this idea for a video series and also uh, let me know by hitting that like button too but anyway, let's go on ahead and get started. Like I said, this one's about the new Metaphys cards that are in Circuit Break, and along with that, we actually already have two Metaphys cards that are already in English. They don't really fit too well with the new support that was revealed, but uh, they're still worth talking about because they can be used with the new support, obviously, too. And they are Metaphys Armed Dragon and Metaphys Horus. Like I said, you guys probably already have tons of each of these. Metaphys Armed Dragon was pretty interesting when it was first revealed because it's like, cool, Armed Dragon's back. You know, it's a light version, I guess a reborn version. That's pretty cool, but it's kind of a beat stick normal monster, so really we didn't think much of it. And then afterwards, kind of the same thing with Metaphys Horus. It's like, well, you know, Horus is back, that's awesome. I mean, all these Metaphys cards are, you know, really iconic monsters that have been brought back. So obviously people are like, cool. I mean, Horus is one of my favorites too back then. So it was cool to see a synchro version of it. But also too, it kind of seems uh, random when we saw both these cards, because for an example, with Metaphys Horus, its effect would change depending on if you used a uh, pendulum monster, a normal monster, or an effect monster to synchro into it. So both of these really didn't go together, even though they both had Metaphys in their name and were both older cards kind of reborn. So you can tell that I guess they didn't really have an idea how they wanted to make this archetype work just yet Because especially when you go to circuit break now the archetype is based off of banishing each other Gaining effects from being banished and then being able to special summon these high-level metaphys monsters Just about all of them are high-level monsters except for Ragnarok Ragnarok kind of makes it so Horus makes a little bit more sense because it is actually a tuner monster But still in the builds that I'm using everything and what I've seen uh, Not many people are using Horus or Arm Dragon just because they don't really fit with well, with their own archetype, which is, like I said, kind of random. I know, like I said, it's like they didn't really know what they were going to do with them just yet. You could still use Metaphys Arm Dragon if you want, because it's still a good beat stick monster. You can easily bring it out in new Metaphys decks. But other than that, it's one of those that maybe you would run one of. And with Metaphys Horus, like I said, we do have a tuner monster now for them, but you don't really have any other lower level monsters. All Metaphys monsters are basically 7, 8, and 9 on their levels. Except for Horus. Horus is actually a level 6, I guess. But other than that, we only have one level 4 and nothing lower than that. You could run a weaker monster to help you go for that Synchro Summon, but really... I don't see you getting much out of having Metaphys Horus. Unless that changes later on, maybe we get a weaker monster, like a level 2 uh, Metaphys that's easy to bring out and has a good uh, banishing effect too. Then okay, I could see that working. But for now, both of these cards really aren't that useful for the rest of the archetype, which is kind of sad to say. Alright, so starting out with the new support that came out in Circuit Break, we have Metaphys Ragnarok. You guys may actually remember this card, he was an old normal monster back then. And anyway, it's been returned as a light level 4 worm tuner monster, 1500 attack and 1000 defense. As kind of a quick summary of what its effect is, is that uh, if it is normal or special summon, you banish the top three cards of your deck, and then if any of them are Metaphys cards that are not Metaphysical Regeneration, this card gains 300 attack for each one. Also, when it inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can special summon a level 5 or higher Metaphys monster from your deck, but banish it during the end phase of the next turn. Of course, you can only activate each of these effects once per turn. So, uh, what does this card do, and why is it useful, you may be asking. Well, what this card does is basically it's the one that jumpstarts everything. You're able to banish cards from the top of your deck using this card, and hopefully you're banishing some Metaphys monsters, so that way their effects will activate. Because with the new Metaphys monsters, what they do is basically, uh, when they are banished, they get different effects, where then they go back to the deck afterwards after they activate them, and then also when they are special summoned, they have different effects that activate. So that's what the whole archetype does. So this is the key card to that, because not only are you able to banish cards, you are actually able to special summon Metaphys monsters too with this. So it really is your key card it's one you're going to be running three of and it's also kind of an added bonus that it is a tuner monster when i've been using this card like i said i don't see myself going for metaphys horus but if you do happen to use something like light red greffer which is again in the support section we'll get to here in a second or something like that it does give you an option to go for a synchro summon so that is pretty good other than that though the main reason you use this card is to banish your metaphys cards because again you want to banish your monsters so their effects get activated and also being able to special summon more of them and also get those effects activated is just amazing for you so that's the reason that is a definite run three in any Metaphys build. 
And next up we have Metaphys Daedalus. So yes, you may remember this old sea serpent monster. It's come back, it's been reborn, this time as a light level 7 wire uh, effect monster with 2600 attack and 1500 defense. Anyway, its effects are, if this card is special summoned by the effect of a Metaphys monster, you can banish all other face-up special summon monsters on the field. Once per turn during the standby phase, if this card was banished last turn, you can shuffle this banished card into the deck, banish one Metaphys card from your deck except Metaphys Daedalus or a Metaphysical Regeneration. So again, this is what the new Metaphys monsters do. They gain effects from being banished, and they also gain effects from whenever they are special summoned by a Metaphys monster. This one, for an example, is just able to wipe out special summon monsters on the field. So that is very useful for you. I mean, think about it. Think about that with XC summoning, Link monsters, all that. They are all special summoned. So with this card, you're essentially able to more than likely just wipe out your opponent's field and just banish all their cards like that, which is going to be very helpful for you. And it's a great card to just get around really powerful monsters. And even, you know, you don't mind banishing some of your own special summon monsters too, especially if they're Metaphys monsters, because you're getting their own effects from it anyway. So it's not a double-edged sword even for you. And not only that, when this card is banished and during the next standby phase you are able to send it back to the deck so you can, re it can recycle itself basically and then you're able to banish one of your Metaphys cards from your deck. A good option to go for would be Metaphys uh, Nethides just because with it it's a searcher. You're able to search with it which we're going to get to here in a second. That's usually the one I go for whenever I you know banish one of the Metaphys cards or of course you can go for Tyrant Dragon, Metaphys Tyrant Dragon because then you're getting that special summon effect from it. And uh, this card too, I want to say as well, is the main one you want to special summon with uh, Metaphys Tyrant Dragon. Because with that effect, being able to just get rid of all special summon monsters, like I said, it really is uh, something that can wipe out the field and turn a duel in your favor. So it's an amazing card. It's one I, again, would run at three, and it just does so many things for the deck too. It helps you get cards where you need them, and also a great way to just sweep away those special summon monsters. Now next up we are to Metaphys Nethides. Anyway, light level 8 wire monster, of course, uh, with 2400 attack, 1600 defense. Its effects are, uh, if this card is special summoned by the effect of Metaphys monster, you can banish all set spells and traps on the field. Once per turn during the standby phase, this card was banished last turn, you can shuffle this banished card into the deck, add one Metaphys card from your deck or hand, except Metaphys and Nethides or Metaphysical Regeneration. So basically what this card does is, uh, it's just kind of another one like Daedalus, just with some slight changes. Really what it does is that when it's special summoned by the effect of a Metaphys monster, you're just able to get rid of all set uh, spells and trap cards on the field. This effect doesn't really hurt you in most cases because your spell traps you're going to be using are more than likely going to be continuous. The ones that work with the archetype are already continuous, so you're going to already have those activated for you, so it's not going to get rid of those, just the set ones. So with this, of course, it gets rid of that back row that your opponent may have, which is something that is definitely deadly to go up against when you're using higher level monsters, so that is always something you have to worry about. I know I definitely had to with like Galaxy Eyes and other things too. And uh, not only that, this card is the searcher. Like, it's the searcher for any Metaphys card that you need, and I say card too, not just monsters. Monster. Because when this card is banished, then during that next standby phase like that, you're able to then search for a Metaphys card from your deck and add it to your hand. That can help you add Ragnarok to your hand so you have an easy to summon monster or, you know, being able to banish more. That can give you the continuous spell, which is definitely one of the key cards of the deck. Or, you know, just anything you may need. Maybe you need a stronger monster that you're about to, you know, because Tyrant Dragon's effect is about to activate and you need a monster to your hand. Do that. Get Daedalus even. That way you can special summon it, use his effect on it. You know, it just kind of depends on your situation for it, but you have access to essentially the whole deck. Basically all your main cards. So that's the reason this card is amazing. Again, this is one I would run at three. It does everything you need and like I said it's just the searcher and it's like your sort of heavy storm even card in a way so it's a great counterpart to Daedalus and both of them will help you out depending on your situation too depending on whatever deck you're going against. Afterwards, we have Metaphys Tyrant Dragon. Now, this again is kind of more of the beat stick monster because it is a light level 8 wire effect monster with 2900 attack, 2500 defense. Its effect is that if this card was special summoned by the effect of Metaphys monster, it is unaffected by trap effects. Also, if this card attacks a monster, it can make a second attack in a row. Once per turn during the standby phase, if this card was banished last turn, you can shuffle this banished card into the deck, special summon one Metaphys monster from your hand, but banish it during the end phase of the next turn. So yeah, like I said, this is another powerful monster for the Nethides. I mean, basically what it does is that when it's special summoned by the effect of a Nethides monster, it's unaffected by trap effects and it can attack twice. So being able to do that, that's amazing right off the bat. Not only that though, the part of it that makes it really good is that when it's banished, you're able to special summon a Metaphys monster from your hand, but also it gets banished during the end phase of the next turn. That's not a problem for you. You're running Metaphys, you don't care if your monsters are banished. That's not a double-edged sword, honestly, right there. I'm just gonna say that right off the bat. Uh, but anyway, What's so great about this card? First off, just being able to special summon Metaphys monsters from your hand, 
that's amazing. Just that by itself makes this card good. Because from that, you could combo cards like with uh, Metaphys Daedalus, use its effect when it's already banished, to then send it back into the deck, then you can choose a Metaphys monster to banish, which in this case you could choose Metaphys Tyrant Dragon, banish it, and then that next standby phase you have an easy special summon. That way if you have Metaphys uh, Tyrant Dragon, then you're getting one with its full effect special summon to your side of the field. If you have Nethodes, then you're getting a way where you can get rid of all set spells and traps, you're banishing them then because they were special summon obviously by Tyrant Dragon. And same with Daedalus, you're able to then get rid of all special summon monsters. So it doesn't matter which one you have, even Ragnarok's effect will still activate because if it is normal or special summon, it activates. So with this, you have access to being able to get those special summoning effects for all of your Metaphys monsters, which is just amazing. You don't have to worry about sacrificing monsters for them, tributing, whatever, you have it just right there being on special summon them. Again, it's another monster you want to run three of. You might be able to get away with two, but I feel like you need three of this one too. It's the main Metaphys monsters, you basically need three of each of them because they work so well together. This one with Daedalus and Ethides are just amazing. Being able to search for each other, banish the ones you want to, and even special summon the ones you want. It, it's an amazing combo to do. And then of course for our last Metaphys monster, we have Metaphys Executor. This is the brand new one that we got at the end whenever the set, the rest of the cards were revealed. So uh, this one's a little bit different than the others. So first off, light level 10 wire monster, 3000 attack, 2500 defense. And of course its effect is, cannot be normal summon or sent, must be special summoned from your hand by banishing five Metaphys cards with different names from your graveyard and or face up on the field. This face up card on the field cannot be uh, destroyed by card effects or banished. Once per turn, if your opponent controls more cards than you do, you can target one of your banished Metaphys monsters, special summon it, but banish it during the end phase of the next turn. Alright, so what do I think about this boss monster? Is it good? Is it worth running? Well, yes and no, in a way. I mean, I run one of these because basically what this card does for you is if things aren't working out for you, if you actually have a bunch of Metaphys cards in your graveyard and not banished, this card can help you out with that. It banishes them for you and you get a strong monster out of it. But if you're playing the deck right and things are actually going your way, you really aren't going to be able to summon this card. It's really not that useful for you. It does have some great effects and everything to go along with it, but really, it's one of those boss monsters where it's like, you know, you can run one or none of it, really, because the rest of the monsters are good enough as they are anyway, whereas you don't necessarily need a boss monster. So that's just the way I feel about it. It's just one of those cards where, again, maybe if you're not banishing things the way you should, this can save you, but... Honestly, I just I'm not a big fan of it because I don't want to be in that situation anyway If I'm in that situation anyway, I'm not gonna win more than likely I mean and you're you're playing the deck wrong anyway if you're in that spot all right now moving on to the spell cards We have a uh, Metaphys factor Which is the brand new field spell for them and its effect is each turn one level five or higher Metaphys monster You normal summon can be summoned without tributing But if you do uh, using this effect banish that monster during the end phase of the next turn Even if this card leaves the field your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of Metaphys monsters effects. So basically, again, what does this card do? It helps you bring out those high level Metaphys monsters. That's what it does. It allows you to just normal summon them instead of tributing monsters for them. That's basically it. Also, yes, it banishes them after a little bit, but again, you're, you're running Metaphys, you don't care. You don't care if they're banished because you're going to be able to just switch through all of them anyway, so that's not a problem for you. And then also, it's able to give your Metaphys monsters some added protection. So, is it like one of the best fields? spells out there you know it, it's a useful one I'll say that it's a very useful card it's one I run at three and it is one you can get away with running at two but yeah it'll do what you need it to but it is nothing it's not like the key card of the archetype which I kind of like because we've been seeing that too much with uh, too many different archetypes lately Next up we have Ascend Metaphys. This is a continuous spell card and its effect is uh, once per turn you can banish one Metaphys card from your hand except uh, Metaphysical Regeneration and if you do draw one card. Once per turn if a Metaphys card in your possession is banished except Metaphysical Regeneration, apply this effect depending on whose turn it is. If it's your turn, all monsters on the field lose 500 attack and defense except Metaphys monsters, even if this card leaves the field. Or if it's your opponent's turn, change the battle positions of all monsters on the field except Metaphys monsters. So yes, this is your key card for Metaphys. This is your main spell card. <laughs> we'll go ahead and say that right now. You run three of this card and you want it on your side of the field as soon as possible. What it does is that you're able to banish a Metaphys card from your hand and then draw a card. Think about that. All those different effects I told you about, think about just Nethodes. With that, you're banishing it, drawing a card, and also you're gonna be able to search for a Metaphys card and add it to your hand the next standby phase like that. That's pretty ridiculous if you think about it like that. And then all the other effects that can go along with that. And of course it's a card too, it's not just the monster. So if, again, if you have the boss monster and it's not useful for you, you can get rid of it using this, you know, and still get a draw from it. 
Not only that though, of course, in most cases you're going to be doing this banishing in your turn. So with that, you're weakening all non metaphys monsters. So more likely you're going to have metaphys monsters on your side of the field. You may be running some other monsters that aren't metaphys, but really it's still not a problem for you. But you're able to just weaken your opponent's monsters, which you can do some serious damage with that too, of course. with And then of course your opponent's turn, you're able to change battle positions. Being able to banish certain cards in your opponent's turn like that can actually protect you. If you don't have the good lineup, you don't have you know some really strong metaphys in your side of the field, or they just have stronger monsters, there you go. You can also protect yourself with those cards. It's a pretty ridiculous one, and it is definitely your key card to everything Metaphys. So this is the one you have to draw and use as quickly as possible. It is your main card. And now we're down to our final Metaphys card, and that is Metaphys Dimension. It is a continuous trap card, and its effect is uh, if your opponent special summons a monster, except during the damage step, you can target one of your banished Metaphys monsters, special summon it, but banish it during the end phase of the next turn, even if this card leaves the field. If another Metaphys card in your possession is banished while this card is face up on the field, except Metaphysical Regeneration, except during the damage step, you can target one card your opponent controls, banish it. You can only use each effect of Metaphys Dimension once per turn. So what does this card do for you? How does it help? Well, this is pretty good because first off, it's just a good way to uh, special summon more metaphys. So that first effect is really good for that. And also not only that, uh, you're gonna be banishing cards like crazy. I mean, honestly, if you're playing the deck right and the, with the cards I'm telling you guys to use, uh, yeah, you will be banishing them like it's nothing. So this is a card that I run two of actually in my build right now, and that's what I recommend it at because being able to do that, you're getting some easy special summons because if your opponent special summons, there you go, you're getting a metaphys in return and then it's effect will activate. Think about Daedalus right there or Nethides. Clearing out those spells and traps, clearing out the special summon monsters. There you go, so that's a good combo. And then also being able to banish one of your opponent's cards with that last effect, yeah, that's nothing. That's not a problem for you at all. You are banishing your monsters anyway all the time. You will get that effect pretty much each turn. Each turn you can activate because you only use it once per turn. And it's another one too that's good offensively and for defense too. Just being able to banish cards again is just insane for you because you will be able to banish your meta fees all the time. And being able to banish your opponent's cards too. Yeah, they won't enjoy that too much. Now let's talk about some different support cards that actually work really well with Metaphys. First off, Gold Sarcophagus. This one is a no-brainer, obviously, on that. You are instantly able to choose a card from your deck and banish it. Think about that. You have Nethodes, Daedalus, all these different ones. You're banishing them. And there you go. It doesn't matter that, you know, if they stay banished, of course, then you are able to get them a Gold Sarcophagus, but that's not how the deck works. Really, they're going to be returned to the deck. You're going to use their effects, of course, they return to the deck. So you're not actually going to get that searching ability for Gold Sarcophagus, but what you're gaining is an ability to be able to instantly banish whatever metaphys you want. And that's how it works. You're not using Gold Sarcophagus really for the way it's made. You're using it to banish whatever you want and uh, get that card's effect going. And it's a great card to help you start off everything in the combo. And it, that's why this is a support card I recommend at three. It is easily a staple which means you don't run metaphys without this card. Also, Dimensional Fissure. Uh, obviously. I mean, <laughs> you want to banish cards. And same with Macros Cosmos. I'll go ahead and lead into that too. Same reason for both of these. You want to banish cards. And you know what too? Banish your opponent's monsters. Don't let them use the graveyard either. Why not? It doesn't hurt you and actually works to your advantage. So there you go. I mean, it's a great card for that. It's a good way to combo against your opponent and throw them off their game, especially if it's a deck that relies on the graveyard. And also, it's a great way to help out your cards too. So it works out well for both of you. And that's why I recommend running one of each of these in Metaphys as well. After that, we have Light Rig Griffer. This card a lot of people have talked about because of what it can do. You have a lot of uh, over level five or higher light monsters in the deck, so you can easily be able to special summon this card. And then you're able to discard a light monster and then banish light monster from your deck. So then it kind of gives you that gold sarcophagus sort of effect from that second part of its effect. Also, you don't mind discarding things if you have a dimensional fissure or Mecros Cosmos, that's not a problem either. So that's what a lot of people like about this deck, is that it has good synergy with that. And of course, with Ragnarok, you gain a level 4 monster, which then you can synchro summon them both together, and even go for something like Omega. So it's a great card for that. It's one I've been testing out too. It works pretty well, but it can sometimes be a hassle. It just depends on your build, really. So it's one that you're probably going to run at 3, maybe 2. It's either probably going to be 3 or none. It just depends on your build. Fairy Tale Snow. Uh, yeah, this one's pretty self-explanatory too. Basically, it's a card that allows you to banish 7 cards from your hand, field or graveyard. So obviously you can see how that's going to work out really well with Metaphys. Being able to banish so many cards, think about if you have a bunch of them in your hand or field or or even in your graveyard, getting all those effects from them being banished. Yeah, that can definitely turn around a game for you. And also you're getting a fairly strong uh, level four monster, which can also combo really well with Ragnarok. To me though, this card seems like it's one of those, like you either run Snow or you run Greffer. 
that's kind of what I've seen in my experience. I run Griffer over snow right now, but it, it just kind of depends on how you feel, really. I feel like either one, though, are great options, and both, like I said, work really well with Ragnarok, because then you can go for, like, level 8 Synchro Monsters, go for, like, Omega or something really easily. Then after that, we have Necroface, which this one is, I'm sure, really obvious to you guys, too, and it is amazing for this deck, because when it's banished, you banish the top five cards of your deck as well. And then also, if you normal summon it, you're able to return all your banished cards, and then it gains attack from it. So it's a great recycling card, and it's just a great card to help you banish more cards. What I like using it with is like with a Ragnarok, because if I happen to banish it with Ragnarok's effect, then I'm also banishing an extra five cards, which then can help you really get the deck going. So it works out really great with that. And then if you use an Dimensional Fissure, and you have a ton of cards that have been banished on your opponent's side of the field as well, there you go, you gain a really strong monster, just summon Necroface and you gain actually a powerhouse monster because its attack can skyrocket really easily. So it helps out with both those, you can even recycle everything and of course all those banished cards go back to the deck too from that effect. So it can help you just kind of reset everything and it, it's pretty great for that. So definitely you have to run two of these, like I feel like that is a staple as well. We also have the Blazing Mars. This card is great because, again, it's another card that can help you banish cards. You can banish three other monsters from your graveyard, special summon this card. That's why a lot of people are running it. It's another level 8 monster, so it can work well with uh, trade-in. And also, since we do have level 8 uh, Metaphys monsters, you can use them to exceed summon. That's basically why this card works. I mean, not much else to say other than that. Just helps you banish more cards and get an easy special summon. Card of Sanctity. This card just allows you to banish everything, then draw two cards. <laughs> That's what's good about it. Banish, get rid of all those cards, activate those effects, draw two cards. Nothing else to say about it, really. It's a good option to have. Left Arm Offering, another one. Just being able to banish stuff, and then you're able to search for a spell or trap card. Think about it, just banish your hand, and then get Gold Sarcophagus. You know, <laughs> there you go, you're all set up. And of course, you're banishing those monsters, you're getting those effects from it too, it can really help you out. After that, we have Soul Release, being able to target five cards in any graveyard and banish them. Self-explanatory. Banish those Metaphys monsters, get their effects going, or heck, just mess with your opponent, get rid of some of their monsters. And then last, but certainly not least of the support cards, I want to talk about Waterfall of Dragon Souls. This card actually helps out a ton, mainly just because you're able to add a wire type monster from your deck to your hand. There you go, it's a searcher card for you. Get that Ragnarok a lot quicker. And also, it has a little bit of a draw effect too, you send cards to the graveyard. Really though, that second effect is something you're not really going to use. The first effect's the useful one just because you have a searching ability. Go for those wire monsters and get them, which gives you access to basically everything, obviously because they're all wire monsters. And yep, there you go, that is my Metaphys Archetype discussion video. I hope this video wasn't too long because, well, there's a lot of cards to talk about, a lot of things I wanted to talk about. So hopefully it was entertaining and also something that helped you guys out too. Uh, maybe you want to use Metaphys, maybe you just wanted to learn how they work or something like that, even to learn how to go against them. Hopefully this video gives you ideas on all of that stuff because that's what I want this video series to do. So let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this. Again, hit that like button if you want to see more of these in the future and even give me some ideas on other archetypes you would like to see me talk about. I'm planning on probably talking about uh, the crawler archetype next which is the ones that have link monsters the new insect link monster archetype but let me know in the comments if you guys have some new requests too and I'll try to get to those as soon as possible as always thank you guys for watching be sure to of course subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh videos and I will catch you guys later see ya